made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them, I heard saying, blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne.
Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. He's holy, he's holy, he's holy, he's holy, he's holy, he's holy. He's worthy, he's worthy. Come on and give him a praise in this house. Come on and give him glory in this house. Come on and give him glory in this house. He's worthy, he's worthy. The King of kings, the Lord. Worthy. How many believe he's worthy this morning? Oh, come on and give him one more praise in this house. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory to God. Are you excited this morning? Praise God for what he's doing in this house and in you. Praise God. Welcome to Harvest Family this morning. What a blessing it is to have you here. Such a blessing, such a blessing. Why don't you step out from where you're at and just high five somebody and tell them he's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy.
Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. What a blessing it is to have you here this morning. We want to welcome our newcomers uh, to the house of God this morning, Harvest family. Harvest, why don't we give them a big hand this morning? Our first time guests, newcomers, newcomers this morning. Here. Praise God. We want y'all to go home. Praise God. And in the pocket of the chair in front of you, there's a connect card. If this is your first time here, we'd love for you to pick up. Where you fill that out and, um, and you drop into the offering as it goes by. It's such a blessing to have you here this morning. And just two quick announcements uh, before we move to our um, offering this morning. Praise God. Two quick announcements. First thing we're going to have uh, our movie night is uh, Friday night at 7 p.m. This Friday night at 7 p.m. We had to reschedule for the rain. So y'all just uh, on your way out this morning, uh, just grab some flyers and, and, and please invite one because and, and tell them. There's uh, hot dogs, popcorn, snow cones, moonwalks, and we just have, we have a ton uh, of giveaways. So, man, that is going to be such a blessing. So just invite somebody. Just remember, somebody say, next Friday night, movie night. Next Friday night, movie night. this Friday night. This Friday night. This Friday night. This Friday night. If you show up next, you, you'll be out. You'll be out of love. But no, this, this Friday, praise God, this Friday. I got to say this Friday. Praise God. And our other one, also the, the, the second announcement is, is after service. I'm pretty sure how many uh, caught the tents and uh, the tables there. That is, that is something we're doing. Is, uh, if, you wanna, if you're wondering how to serve or what you can do to uh, bless your church, we, we have an opportunity. It's called uh, Test Drive Ministry. It's, a, it's, it's an opportunity. So after service, we want you to go out there at the table and check it out. We have free drinks for everyone. When you, whatever ministry... Look, you're looking at the table, man, this, this is where I want to serve the children. It's just once, we just ask once a month, sign up, and, and just, it's for one time just to see if you, if, if that, where you want to fit. It, it, is this for me? Just once a month, and if it is, man, we, it, it's going to be such a blessing, an opportunity, so you can serve. And we, we have free drinks and uh, free Cokes and everything. We also, for those that sign up, we, we have a free book, 12 Ways to Be a Blessing, to your church. Praise God. Man, this is an awesome book. I read this. It's, it's, it's such an awesome, awesome book. And how many, how many want to really be a blessing to their church? Amen. Praise God. So why don't you stop by the table and check it out. Praise God. And it's going to be such a blessing. Praise God. Amen. Are you ready to give? Are you ready for the tithing and the offering to give yeah. this morning to the Lord? Yeah. Amen. The ushers are coming at this time. Praise God. Ushers are coming this morning. Praise God. The scriptures says this morning, Mark 13, in Mark 13, 41st verse, Jesus went over to the collection box in the temple and sat and watched as the crowds dropped their money. Jesus was watching people, praise God. Have you ever watched anybody drop, whether they're really wondering? But this is Jesus here watching. And he said, many, many rich people put in large amounts. Then he said, and then notice what he said before, the 42nd verse, then a poor widow came and dropped in two pennies. He called his disciples to, them, to, to him and said, I assure you, this poor widow gave more than all the others have given. Why? Why? This is four. Because she gave out of the surplus. They gave out of the surplus of their riches. But she, this poor widow, gave everything she has. Praise God. Let's we know that in tough times, learning to give. Praise God. How many know that God will meet every need? Praise God. And she trusted God and she stepped out on faith. Praise God. Amen. Father, we thank you and we love you and we bless you and we give you praise today, Father, because you give us strength, Father, day by day. And we bless you, Father. And we give, Father, for the upbuilding of your kingdom, knowing that you're meeting every need. Father, we thank you. We bless you, and we praise you, and we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.
to be a world changer. I just want you to turn to somebody beside you and tell them, yes, one life can change the world. Would you just do that real quick? And uh, as you're, I want you to get out your uh, message notes that you were given on the way in. And if you did not get a copy, just raise your hand. And if you'd like a copy of the message notes, just, just raise your hand so your ushers, our ushers can serve you. Make sure you, I want you to get a copy before we get into the message uh, real quick. This is my lovely and amazing wife, the first lady of this church. And, uh, she's amazing. And she had a real quick announcement she wanted to make to all of all of our amazing uh, ladies today. Yes, and you all are amazing. Tonight at 6 o'clock in the cafe, we're going to take a little break from our Bible study just for this month. And I wanted to have a fun time of fellowship because I really want to get to know each one of you ladies better. There's a few that come that, that we have an awesome time, but there's a lot that haven't been able to come. So tonight we're going to put the Bible study on the back burner just for this month. And I just want us to have a fun time together to get to know each other. I want y'all to get to know me, and I want to get to know you better. So tonight at 6 o'clock in the cafe, we're going to have a fun time, a fellowship. We may play some games, but more importantly, I just want to get to know you better. And so tonight at 6 o'clock in the cafe, and you are more than welcome to bring food or dessert or banana pudding or cookies or anything like that. So I would love to see each and every one of you here tonight. All for Jesus. Amen. 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 Turn with me to Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. We're uh, continuing this conversation in God's Word entitled, Change the World. Change the World. That's a tall order, but uh, I got news for you. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Yeah. And so you're not in this world to be overcome by it. You're put in this world. Come on, are you hearing what I'm saying today? To overcome this world by the power of Christ. And so look at Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Paul says this. Now, I love, I love this. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant. He was not a servant. He was a king. But he took on the form of a servant. Being born in the likeness of men. Think about it. God who can never die becoming a man that was susceptible to death. Think about it. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death. Even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name. So that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow. In heaven, on earth, and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Would you just give him a big hand clap of praise? <laughs> Hallelujah. Would you just shout it with me? Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. And he's my Lord. And he's my Lord. Hallelujah. Serving is the heart of God. Serving is the heart of Jesus. I shared with you last week uh, a, something uh, incredible to me that Mother Teresa said, a lady that laid down her life for the children in Calcutta, India. And something that was powerful that uh, author John Ortberg said, he quoted her. And he said, if you can't do great things, Mother Teresa used to say, do them with great love. If you can't do them with great love, do them with a little love. If you can't do them with a little love, do them anyway. Love grows when people serve. Love grows when we serve. That's God's way. And I want you to turn on the inside of your notes. We've been talking about the bookends of God's existence. How that Genesis 1-2 is the very beginning, paradise, how God created this planet and how he originally intended that humankind should exist with him, man relating and ruling with God. Adam, who was given dominion over the world and, 
And he was God wanted relationship with man. And then we see in Revelation 21, 22, the, the uh, uh, actual, the other bookend. We see the beginning and we see the end where we move into eternity. Another paradise, a new Jerusalem where believers who have gone to heaven then rule and relate to God. And But here we are, caught in the middle of the bookends of our existence from Re Genesis 1 to Revelation 22. And what we see is God bringing His Son into the earth to bring change to the world. Jesus Christ changed the world by serving it. And rather, Jesus Christ changed the world by serving God and serving the world. We see in the very centerpiece of time and eternity is the cross. God laying down His life to serve humanity. And now He has called and equipped us to be world changers. He's called and equipped us to go into the marketplaces, into our homes, in every sphere of influence that God gives us and rescue people with God. To serve as He served. He didn't come to serve. He didn't come to be served. He came to serve and He sent us not to be served, but He sent us out with a purpose and that is to serve the world. Can I have an amen? Amen. Real quickly. Come on, give him a hand clap. It's the truth. That's the only thing that can change this planet. And real quickly this morning, I want to talk to you about discovering the power and freedom that's found in serving. Discovering the power and the freedom. Isn't it amazing in our human nature we think that we, we, kind of, we have this connotation of serving with weakness and bondage. And God's word declares actually serving sets us free. Serving produces power in our life. Man, I sense an anointing in this house today. I hope you can hang with me for a few minutes. So there's power and freedom in serving others. Number one, you've got to understand and know this. Jesus was the ultimate suffering servant. That's where you start. That's where you begin. It begins and ends with Jesus, who's the Alpha and Omega. So we begin the conversation about serving with Him. Jesus... It was the ultimate, the ultimate suffering servant, if you're filling the blanks in number one. Think about God who, who, who became man and was reduced to human form. Not only was he reduced to human form, he was reduced to death at the hands of sinful men. Not only just death, not a dignified death, but a, an execution of criminals execution. And I've got news for you. He did it for you and he did it for me. He did it for this world. He was he was taking upon my sin. He was taking upon your sin. He was taking upon, oh, he was carrying it upon himself. And i got news for you. What he carried for you, you do not have to carry one more day. The guilt and the shame, the bondage and the addiction. It is broken by the cross of Jesus Christ. And my deliverer. Hallelujah. Isaiah said it was our weakness that he carried. Could you just say that? It was my weakness that he carried. It was my sorrow that weighed him down. And I got new. If you're weighed down today, he wants you to cast it all upon him. Because he cares for you. Touch somebody beside you. Just slap him and say he cares for you this morning. He was not a servant. He was a king. Huge difference. And he took upon the form of a servant. And we now are kings and priests unto God. But before we get too high-minded and, and uh, big-headed, just as our king and high priest, as he ruled and related with God by serving, that's our calling. That's how we're kings and priests unto God, by serving others. Number two, serving starts by serving God first. Serving starts by serving God first. Number one, we get a vision of Jesus and we see the, the servant that he was and how he lived his life and, 
and we are so captivated and passionate and in love with him. And it changes and wrecks our life forever. That's what the gospel does. The real gospel of Jesus does. And when that happens, we begin serving by serving God first. First things first, folks. Isn't it, it's amazing. Human nature, you can't put on this little fake front and this little mask and say, I just want to serve you. You lying snake. <laughs> that can only happen when you're filled with the Holy Ghost. When God lives on the inside of you and you're serving God out of a pure heart, you can serve. Why? It's not you. It's Him. It's not by might. It's not by human power. It's not by your ability. It's by the power of God that we serve. Hallelujah. That is the answer. Say, man, I don't want to serve. Get more filled up with God. That, and that's what Paul is saying. Have this mind in you. Look at verse 8. Have this mind in you. And that's what Jesus did. He was serving God. Ultimately, ultimately he came, number one, to serve Father. He said, I only do what I hear my Father saying and doing. That's what I do. I'm completely surrendered to his will. And when that happens, serving others is a byproduct of serving God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. Can I have a better amen? Yes. Number three, serving God is validated by serving others. Serving God. You're telling me you serve God? It's validated when others are served through our life. It's an overflow. It's an outflow. It's a byproduct. When we serve God, it just begins to naturally happen. That's what, that's what John said. The command we have from Christ is blunt. Loving God includes loving people. you got to love both. Amen. How can you love God who you can't see and not love people that you can see? It's pretty straight shooting. That's my kind of preaching. Amen. We have to love when we love God, we will love people. It's not a force yourself to love. No, it's being so in love with God, so in tune with Him, that love flows out of your life onto each other. That's the kind of life I want to live. How about you? Amen? Amen. I, uh, and I just put this down under there. I, God's called us to be a servant and not a martyr. Now, you may be a martyr in the sense that you may have to die for your faith. That's not what I'm talking about. Thank God for martyrs. We talked about last weekend people that have sacrificed their life, given their lives for this country. The martyrs, is the, the, their blood is the seedbed of the church throughout history. People that are now currently being persecuted for their faith in Christ. But the, the martyr I'm talking about carries no honor with it. The martyr, is a, the martyr I'm talking about is a mindset of an individual. Oh, we've all met them. They, all they want to talk to you about and tell you about is how much they're doing and how little return they're getting for what they're doing. They feel like a slave to their family. Oh, I do so much for my kids. I do so much in my church and nobody notices me or appreciates me. Oh, it's a blessing to have a conversation with them. Amen. That's not the kind of martyr I'm talking about. We can, and it's so easy to fall into this trap of, oh, I'm just a martyr. And what's so crazy is that we start out serving our families, our friends, and our church, and we're excited about doing it, we're loving it, and then something happens in our heart. We expect this, we have this expectation of return. I don't know what the unrealistic expectations may be, but then our attitude gets sour, and all of a sudden we find ourselves in self-pity. Wow, I'm so glad Jesus didn't do that. We become a martyr. Maybe the Holy Spirit nudges you to do something special for your spouse. For no reason. Just do something special for them, unexpected. And instead of helping your wife with the laundry or helping her with the dishes, or I don't know, I'm choosing that as an example, you say, oh, I want to pray and read my Bible. When the Holy Spirit's nudging you. Can I tell you, it's amazing how we like to substitute spiritual activity for obedience. Preach on, Pastor Paul. Let's get it. Oh, I'm too busy. I must pray. While your kids are tearing up the house. 
I just wonder how many marriages could be saved if we could just put this principle of serving in action. Amen. Serving, serving. And we think that uh, spiritual activity can take the place of serving. And it doesn't. It doesn't make you more holy. The Lord reminds me and is constantly reminding me that when I serve my wife, when I serve my sons, when I serve other people, I am serving him. Jesus said this, if you've done it unto the least of these, you've done it unto me. And actually, and actually he was saying the least in man's es estimation. There's no one that is little in the eyes of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? No person, no, I don't care how far they fall. There's no person low in the estimation, only in the minds of men, but not in the minds of God. But in ultimate, he's saying what you've done unto others, you are doing unto to me. Wow. Can I tell you? Just take out that attitude, that form of a servant. In your marriage, on the job, get on the job and say, you know what? I'm taking on the form of a servant. I don't like my, my superior. I don't like whoever that is that's telling me what to do. But Jesus, you humbled yourself to death on the cross. I take on that form of a servant. I can tell you, if you would do that and start tomorrow morning, God would turn the situation around. Why? Because you're letting him fight battles for you that you've been trying to fight and you'll never get nowhere. But if you'll humble yourself, I said if you'll humble yourself, take on the form of a servant and live out the Christ life in every, in every arena that you go to, the power and the fragrance of Christ will be released and breakthrough will begin. talking to him and asked him, what's the secret to your success? He said, oh, I just decided I'm going to serve my wife, take good care of her, buy her things, do special things for her, and uh, just, just do my very best to serve her. <laughs> and another, somebody asked, well, wow, that is just so awesome. What did y'all do for your 25th wedding anniversary? He said, Oh, I just love her so much she wanted to go to Beijing, China. And so we, I took her to Beijing, China. Oh, man, isn't that awesome? Isn't that amazing? What a wonderful husband you are. Somebody else who really got excited and said, Man, what did you do for y'all's 50th wedding anniversary? He said, I went back and I got her. Check out this, this quote. I shared it with you last week, but it's just so powerful. I wanted to reiterate it to you. Obeying the Spirit instead of your self-centered whims will lead you to places you've never been. Challenge you in ways you've never been challenged. Invite levels of sacrifice you never dreamed you could make. This is the power and the promise of full throttle faith. Of living a life solely fueled by God. Wow. That's the kind of life I want to live. That's the kind of life I want you to live. A life solely fueled by God where we listen to the Holy Spirit and not my self-centered whims. That's when the power of God can be released. That's when miracles begin to happen. God begins to open doors. Things powerful begin to happen. And God is willing and working in you according to his good pleasure. And then you're able to make sacrifices you never dreamed you could make. Serving Christ. Write this down. Serving Christ and others 
brings glory to God with my life. That's ultimately what it's about. Serving Christ and others with my life brings glory to God. Brings glory to God. That's why we're on this planet. It's to bring Him glory. To bring Him glory. See, that's what Jesus modeled for us. Can we read this out loud together, John 12, in your notes? Ready? One, two, three, go. Now my soul is deeply troubled. Should I pray, Father, save me from this hour? But this is the very reason I came. Father, bring glory to your name. Wow. If we could make that our prayer every day, that we say, God, in my life, in my marriage, in my relationships, in my words, in my attitude, in my money, bring glory to your name. Wow. Satan could not stop a church like that. He could not stop an individual like that. Why? Because we that's insight into the mind of Christ. Remember what Paul said, have this mind in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. What was that mind? We just read it. Father, nevertheless, not my will, but your will. Be done. Father, bring glory to your name. Bring glory to your name. Would you just do Would you just say that, Father? Bring glory to your name through my life. Just would you do that, Father? Bring glory in my life. I want not my own glory. Let no flesh glory in your presence. I want you to get glory out of me, God. The most glory you can get out of this frail human flesh because it's all about eternity. Hallelujah. On the back side of your notes, I want to leave you a, a, something that was said by a world changer for Christ, evangelist Reinhard Bonnke, who has preached literally to millions. In one crusade in Africa, he spoke at one time to over one million people. Miles of amplification set up, crowd, just a sea of people. And this is why I love, I love this. People speak of the call of the prophet Isaiah. But he never was called. He volunteered. He volunteered. Isaiah overheard heard God say, Who shall I send? Who will go for us? God did not say, Isaiah, will you go? Isaiah realized God would send and equip any volunteer and cry, Here I am, send me. The Lord did not hesitate or ask Isaiah to submit his resume first. He just said, Go. Go, go, go. Somebody shout, go. go. What I want you today is to allow the Holy Spirit to begin speaking to you. The, the words of Isaiah where we make it our prayer and we say, God, here I am. Send me. Send me. Here I am, God. Would you stand all across the building? Stand to your feet. Lord, I'll volunteer for your cause. God, I'll do whatever you want me to do. I'll serve. Help me take on the form of a servant. The world can never be changed. Your world will never be changed by trying to, to detour around this principle of serving. Wow. So powerful. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Here's what I want you to ask. I want you to ask the Holy Spirit. Would you just, in your heart of hearts, you don't have to out loud, just in your heart of hearts, would you say, Holy Spirit, what are you speaking to me today in this message? Could we just do that all across the building? You don't have to say it out loud, but just right now, just say, Holy Spirit, would you speak to me? What are you saying to me, God? And allow Him to personalize. Because for some, it may be in your marriage. For others, it may be in a job. For others, it may be to the body of Christ or, or just to people in general or there may be some areas where you need breakthrough that you're, you're living out the heart of God and saying, God, I want to serve you. Father, in Jesus' name, our heart, our desire is to serve you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, to love you as Jesus loved this world and modeled to us, God, that we walk out of this building and change this world one person at a time by taking on the form of a servant, by having the mind and attitude of Christ. Lord, that's the pattern for changing the world. And Father, we make a decision and a commitment to start right now in Jesus' name. Well, every head's bowed, every eye's closed. No one's looking around. Jesus died on the cross for you.
you're here today, you're not a follower of Jesus, you're not a believer in the Lord, maybe you never had been in church before, Jesus loves you. He died for you. He can set you free. You can start a new, brand new life through Jesus. The Bible says that if we believe that God raised him from the dead, that he took upon your sin, that he carried it for you, it's not by your works, it's by your faith, through his grace, that we're allowed salvation. But today, if you would believe on him, put your trust and faith in Jesus for your life, for your eternity. Repent of your sins. Turn away, turn around and away from what you know to be wrong and start following Jesus. The Bible calls that being born again, born from above. You're a new creation. All things are passed away. All things have become new. It's the most beautiful, amazing decision you could ever make this side of eternity. Every head bowed, every eye closed, no one moving around or talking. If that's you, I'm going to count to three, and when I do, I want you to lift your hand, not lift it unto me, but lift it unto the Lord, and we're going to pray. I've been where you are, and never embarrassed you, never do anything like that, ever. I just want to pray with you. I want to lead you to Christ. If that's you, one, two, three, just slip up your hand and slip it back down. I want to yes, anyone else? I want to receive Jesus this morning. I want to ask him into my heart. I want to be a follower of God. Anyone else, thank you for raising your hand. The Bible says all of heaven rejoices when one person, can I tell you, heaven is having a party. Hallelujah. I want to pray with you. And I want every single one of you to pray with me. It's not about repeating a prayer after me. But the Bible says if you believe in your heart, Say it with your mouth. I just want to lead you in a guideline of prayer. That's all that it is. And I want you in your heart to go after God and say, God, here I am. I give you my heart. I give you my life. I forgive me of my sins. Let's pray. Would you, if you're 80 or you're 80, from the front to the back, could you pray? Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of your Son, Jesus. I ask you to forgive me. Cleanse me. I repent from what I know to be wrong. I invite you to come in. I make you the Lord of my life. Lead me. Guide me. I declare that I am a child of God. I will serve you for the rest of my days. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Come on, let's give God a big hand clap of praise in the place. Let me recommend a good Bible-believing church to you. Get plugged into this church. Get plugged in. If you're not from here, get plugged into an awesome Bible-believing church where you can grow in your faith. Get in the Word of God. Start reading the book of John today. Join us on Wednesdays. Join us every Sunday. Send us an email on the worship guide that you were given on your way in. Let us know. We want to help you grow in your walk with God. Wow, God is so good. And if you feel like you've been blessed and touched and ministered to today by the word of God, hallelujah. Just turn to somebody beside you and tell them, well, it's been another bad day for the devil. Would you just do that? Pastor Tommy, would you come? When Pastor Tommy uh, prays, and he's going to pray and dismiss us in prayer, as you exit, we're on each side of the table. Sister Reese is going to be there. And uh, want to, we're going to have people there that are going to help you get signed up. And all of it is test driving a ministry. It's not locking the rest of your life into a ministry. That's what we want to help you take small steps in serving God. And so this is a way you can say, you know what, I'm going to shadow somebody. And what you would do, for instance, if it was the nursery, you'd be scheduled on a day and God will contact you, schedule you. You'll, you'll work with somebody who's trained and kind of get the feel for it. And then you'll know, hey, I'd like to serve here once a month. Guess what? You're coming to church anyway. Once a month's not a big deal, is it? Not a big deal at all. An hour and a half to serve this body 
and see other people connect with God. All of us growing together, God. It's a beautiful, powerful, awesome thing. And so, as Pastor Tommy said, if you sign up to test drive a ministry, we've got that awesome book entitled 12 Ways to Be a Blessing to Your Church. It will be a blessing to you. But free water and drinks for everybody because I'm thirsty. I know you got to be thirsty. Sure love you. God bless you. We'll see you this Wednesday. And invite somebody. We got flyers out there. Invite somebody this Friday to movie night. It's going to be awesome. We're going to enjoy. It's called The Ride, a Billy Graham movie. It's going to be powerful. We're going to have a fun time together. Kick off the summer. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Pastor Tom is going to close us. Father, we thank you. We love you. We bless you. We just give you praise and glory for what you have done. Father, the great and mighty things that you have done and that you're going to do, Father. We love you and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Y'all have a blessed evening. Amen and amen. Praise amen. God.